Hello everybody, this is TechCut. In this video, what I am going to be doing is showing you the installation process as well as some customization for Windows 11. Basically, everything I wasn't able to do in my kind of initial impressions video of Windows 11. Uh, if you have not checked that out and you want to see kind of a full walkthrough of the new Windows operating system, you could go ahead and check out that video either by clicking on the I or going down into the description. So that said, what we're going to do first is install it. Now, one thing a lot of people are running into an issue, they need to have TMP version 2.0 enabled in their BIOS. Now, at the moment, at least for this developer uh, preview edition or whatever it is, uh, it's required. So you have to do that to get it up and running. But it's usually pretty easy to do in your BIOS. All you need to do is look up your specific model of your motherboard. I'll look up TMP and it'll show you how to go ahead and enable that. Now with that said, what we're going to do is go ahead and install this. So setup is starting. First things first, we're going to have our activate windows. Uh, I do not currently have a key, but I'm going to try to activate it in a little bit and do some appearance customizations. Uh, if we don't end up doing that in this video, you know why. Now first we have all the different windows operating systems here. There are quite a number of them. It's something they do and this is almost a little bit more extreme because you have like windows home uh, windows home single single language edition which uh, you have education and i understand education if you like want to get the license cheaper or something like that but it, it's kind of ridiculous how microsoft does it's like pro for workstations like i don't know what that is yet but it's like just unlock your operating system and let people use all the features without having paywalls, for th it's just silly. But with all that said, I'm just gonna go with Pro because I have no idea what Pro Education and Pro for Workstations is at this moment. So let's go ahead and go next. All right, so we have the Terms of Service. If you'd like to, you can go ahead and shuffle through all this. I'm going to accept it for the time being. Go next, and now here is where you either upgrade it. If you already have Windows installed on your only hard drive in the computer, you go ahead with this option. But for most people, you're going to want to go custom and go ahead and select the drive that you plan on using. If you are, if it's already formatted to something like a Linux distro or anything like that, you're going to want to go ahead and delete the drive. Uh, unrelated, if you're deleting Linux to go to this, uh, it's not my personal recommendation. But we're going to go ahead and select this drive, go to next. And you'll notice that it looks a little stretched out because I'm running in uh, VirtualBox at the moment. Uh, so it's not really going to look distorted like this on your monitor hopefully anyways <laughs> so we're gonna wait for this to finish up we all know this process copied all the Windows files it's gonna get everything ready and basically just install everything and we will be right back alright so everything that we just did has been basically the same for every single version of Windows I think Windows 7 Windows Vista might have been a little bit different but it's been the same there was bi no big differences here there are differences there's no actual innovations or nothing new it's just a completely uh, redesigned uh, process but everything that was in Windows 10 for the installation is there and everything that was not there is not there <laughs> basically so uh, pick the right country or region for me it's the United States so we're gonna go ahead and go next here we pick our keyboard which is United States uh, I'm going to skip the second layout for now, and then it's going to go ahead and check for updates. Alright, so there was not any significant updates, or at least it did not say there was. So now we're going to tell it how we would like to set up our devices, and we are going to set this up for personal use. So give that a click and go next. Down here you have your accessibility stuff, but we're not going to get into that now. Now, when I did the initial uh, kind of walkthrough video, I went ahead and signed into an old Microsoft account, and you just go through the process, you sign in. But for this, we're gonna go ahead and do an offline account, and they went did a little extra effort to go ahead and try to hide this from you. So to do that, we're gonna go ahead and do sign in options, and here is where you can select offline account. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, and we're gonna have to tell it again, yes, I want the limited experience so let's go ahead and limit our experience in reality you're just limiting the um, trackers and all that fun stuff i'm going to type in my full name i'm going to make up a secure password and we'll set it out loud whoops and now we're going to run through this process of 
our security questions. So my first pet is one, two, three. My city I was born was also one, two, three. And it just so happens that my childhood nickname was one, two, three. All right, so we're gonna go next. And now here is where you can uh, change your privacy settings. So basically for this, just like with Windows 10, you wanna probably go ahead and just say no to just about everything. From here, we could go ahead and accept that. And now it's gonna go ahead and create our account and get everything set up. Uh, this takes usually takes a very long time for some reason. Um, you can see it's getting things ready for you and it's gonna be doing that for probably about the next five to 10 minutes or so. A uh, few minutes, yeah, it's gonna take a few minutes. <laughs> okay, so we'll be back and we will be booted into the Windows 11 desktop environment and then I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can get it activated. So we will be back. All right, so getting that activated was actually a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I went ahead and installed the VirtualBox driver so it doesn't look as stretched out. It is looking pretty good. And now what we're actually able to do is go ahead and go over to Personalize and check out what we got going on here. One thing about this version of Windows is the backgrounds are absolutely beautiful, at least the default ones that come with the system. I like how they strayed away from either having the Microsoft logo like dead center or off to the side. It's nice that they aren't so, um, don't seem to be as self-absorbed. <laughs> okay, so checking out some of these uh, backgrounds here. My favorite that it comes with anyways is this, uh, this lake looking one right here. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, they also have this one, which is uh, the sky, a planet, something. I don't know. Uh, they have a more gray looking uh, fabric thing similar to the default, which is this one right here. And then they have this one. Absolutely beautiful. I love them. Uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to go ahead and stick with this lake for now. Uh, one thing I do notice is you can see in these preview windows, it has the like Windows 10 tiling thing going on here. While if we look over here, that is not the case. So that's definitely something interesting and something to look out for. They have fill, they have high contrast stuff. Anything you'd expect is in here. Now where we're going to have some real fun is colors. I like dark themes. So let's go ahead and switch it over to dark and that is so much better. It's absolutely beautiful. They went with a solid black, which is super cool. And then they have the very mild transparency effect in the side panel windows here. And let's go ahead and open up our file manager so we can see what this looks like. You can see the transparency goes away when it's not the selected window, but it shows up when it is. And this looks really good. Nothing really transparent or anything going on here. Just everything's darker, which is very, very nice. Uh, we have our accent colors here. So if I go over here and do windows, actually no, over here, the like this right here, this little blue is an accent color. So I could change that to like red if I wanted to. And you can see how that changed to red. So you could go ahead and pick your accent colors and you can show accent colors on the following surfaces. So if I selected this, I could change the bottom panel color to that red and I could select this which will outline the windows and if I go ahead and open this up you can see it also makes that red as well so I could disable that to keep the black or I can enable it to have the top as the accent color uh, I'm going to disable these because I do not think that looks good but that's just uh, me okay then we have lock screen settings you can change the background and you could choose what apps you would like to show on the lock screen so if i go ahead and add one i could add like weather to show i could add the microsoft to do solitaire that you can add a lot of little things that you can quickly access from the lock screen if you like have your laptop off, off to the side or something you don't want to log in but you want to quickly scan the weather uh, stuff like that here we have the background you could select a a specific picture if you'd like to and you could obviously browse and select your own picture which that is very handy um, let's go ahead and do that actually so let's select uh, this right here this is a more of a sunset one it's the exact is it yeah it's the exact same as what we're currently rocking with the background except for it's at sunset so that's gonna be super pretty so let's go ahead and uh, log out real quick so can you do that or how do we lock it? So control alt delete, uh, sign out. Ooh, that red is super bright. Oh yeah, this looks nice. It looks exactly like Windows 10 for the lock screen. Uh, if I go ahead and swipe up, 
Uh, I'm not seeing the weather or anything. I probably have to like log into a Microsoft account to get all that set up. But I just wanted to see that background change there. So let's go back into Personalize. And it's cool they have the option to open in Terminal Window. So I'm not sure if that was there, but that's super handy. That's kind of a Linuxy type feature. One thing about this is this, and a lot of you guys mentioned it in the comments of the other video. This looks really similar to a like customized KDE Plasma type experience all the way down to how the start menu looks and everything. It is incredibly weird. Oh, you can't do the, oh yeah, you can see open in Windows Terminal and it automatically, or it should, yep, put us into that directory. So that's nice. And it looks like the PowerShell actually got some updates too. So that's cool. So let's go ahead and log out of there and let's go down to themes. So this is our theme settings. Um, so these are just pre-configured um, accent colors and backgrounds and all that. So like if I go to sunrise, it's going to change this. Everything's going to go to white. The color is going to be teal and you could use custom themes, save your themes, make your own, whatever you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this back to dark because I think that looks way better. The teal accent does look really good though. Over here we have fonts. There's nothing too special about that. Here we have a start. So here we can go ahead and show our recently used apps, our most used apps, and you could show your recently used items. So like, let's say I wanted to disable this and go back. Well, I didn't really use anything, so you can't really see that, but you could also uh, get rid of this if you don't want the recently installed apps to show up, things like that. Right here we have a link to choose what folders appear on start. So if I go over to start, you can see what it looks like. Now let's say we want to enable settings, documents, downloads, and um, that's it. And if we hit the start menu now, over here where these icons are, you could see everything that we just went ahead and enabled, including the downloads, file explorer, settings, and all that jazz. So that's where these are placed. So let's say I went ahead and just enabled everything. So you can see what it looks like. Oh, not that, my bad start menu you can see everything it's starting to look a little crowded you're not going to probably want all of these but you could go ahead and add those shortcuts there so now let's go to go back and go to the taskbar now the center alignment thing is kind of a big deal it's the first time i think ever since that's been changed granted it's not very innovation it, well innovation innovational it's not significant but it's cool i don't know but you could always just throw that back to the left and have your old school how you'd expect Windows to be. Or you can place it on the center. And then you have all the general settings that you'd expect, such as show the widgets, show the desktop button, and all of that stuff. And you do have links within all of these menus to see or to go to a Microsoft page on how to customize the taskbar. But you can see that this is Windows 10, so the links aren't really relevant to the new operating system. Lastly, we have a section called the device usage. It says, select the ways you plan on using your device to get customized suggestion, tools, tips, and services. Uh, I wouldn't use this personally, but if you really want to, you can select gaming and then it will uh, spam you. And probably it's probably a uh, <laughs> really just integrated adware, but... <laughs> whatever what, what can you do but that, that's basically what I was not able to show you last time so that, some other applications I didn't really open up was the Microsoft Store but look this looks fairly similar to Windows 10 and the other thing I didn't really open was the task manager so if I go ahead let's see where is it am I gonna have to control alt delete usually you could right click and open the task manager but that doesn't seem to be an option so let's go ahead and do control alt delete open up our task manager and right here we can see there are no apps currently running but if we go ahead and open this up you can see everything that is going on under performance it all it basically looks the same compared to what it looked like in windows 10. one thing i do notice is the ram utilization is very high um, and speaking of that i'm going to be testing out the performance of this compared to windows 10 so do make sure you're subscribed and you ring that bell so you don't miss that video. It's going to be one of my benchmarking style videos. Uh, if you're curious to see some benchmarking style videos uh, featuring Windows versus Linux, you could go ahead and check the pinned comment down in the description, which will take you to my other... Uh, well, I'm not going to pin a comment. Uh, you could hit the I, and that will take you to a playlist with all of those videos. So 
With that said, I do hope you enjoyed this video. It's, got, it's a good thing that I got this to work in VirtualBox so we're able to check out some of the things that we were not able to check out before. Uh, with all that said, uh, please like this video if you did, comment if you do have any comments, and I hope you all have a beautiful day, and goodbye.